So at this moment, you should all see the presentation. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, welcome uh, all. Um, I'm sorry for not uh, being there, but um, uh, I'm very happy to present. Um, this presentation is about uh, the CData Cloud online visualization. So after the work uh, that you have seen of uh, <clears throat> Uh, with ODV uh, of uh, AWI and, and um, uh, ULG with uh, with Diva, uh, this um, uh, part uh, that uh, that has been uh, that is uh, working on um, is uh, is about online visualization and it's part of this uh, big uh, data workflow that uh, starts from. Uh, yeah, analyzing the uh, the collections and then uh, eventually uh, through uh, analysis steps going uh, eventually to the uh, visualization uh, on an app uh, in the uh, virtual research environment. Um, I'm Giorgio Santinelli from Deltarius and uh, I've not been uh, working uh, uh, all by myself, because uh, uh, colleagues, uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Fredo Bart and uh, Cindy van der Vries have uh, have worked uh, together with me uh, during the last uh, well during the last months. Um, and again, I did it last time, and I want to do it this time uh, to thank uh, uh, Merit uh, from uh, uh, the UDAT uh, consortium because uh, uh, we have been uh, working a lot uh, during the last. Uh, uh, weeks to uh, have uh, in order to have the system uh, uh, running as uh, smoothly as possible. So it has been uh, hectic uh, days uh, uh, here and there. So uh, I'm happy that uh, everything uh, t turned out well, and uh, and I'm here presenting now. Um, so I'm gonna talk for about uh, 20, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then um, I will uh, uh, leave uh, a space for 15 uh, minutes uh, demo. Uh, and then after that, uh, I will also uh, leave some time for feedback or questions if you have uh, any, uh, both from the uh, remote participants who I hope uh, are uh, listening to me loud and clear. Um, and uh, from the participants uh, there in the in the big room, um, and uh, just as a side note, uh, last time, so uh, Claudia is, is has been very uh, very kind uh, to uh, setting up uh, the old uh, system, um, and uh, last time I missed uh, a bit of the interaction with the public, which is uh, what you uh, hope to have uh, once you uh, present. But uh, I will just uh, uh, picture <laughs> the uh, interaction uh, level uh, in my mind, and uh, uh, it's gonna be okay. And I will hear from you uh, via the uh, through the questions and feedback or any doubts you might have uh, even during the presentation. So uh, do not uh, hesitate to disturb. Um, so the agenda is uh, as follow. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm going to give uh, an introduction more in general about uh, uh, visualization services. Why do we do that and why it is uh, important, especially for C uh, data cloud project. Um, then I'm going to uh, show uh, the example and the demo in the uh, VRE that we have uh, set up uh, uh, these days. And then, uh, and then some space uh, also for you to uh, play around with what is available right now, and uh, and eventually uh, some uh, feedback uh, uh, time. Um, I know that there's planned, there is already planned a feedback moment at the end of the day. Um, but uh, anyway, if you have any any questions again, uh, just uh, just ask. Um, how do okay, yeah, so, um, what we've been uh, doing at the Tarius, uh, during the last uh, years, not only for C uh, data cloud, but for a, a number of projects has been, uh, uh, taking care of the all, uh, uh data 
uh, workflow from uh, raw data uh, to standard data uh, to visualization, um, but also uh, going a little bit further um, in um, towards the uh, telling telling stories and telling um, telling some uh, uh, some more um, some more information than uh, the one that. Uh, that uh, usually you get uh, uh, with uh, with uh, say standard uh, data visualization. So uh, the idea behind is to come up with a story uh, that uh, uh, the most uh, people can uh, can follow, can understand, and can uh, um, say uh, reflect uh, with, um, um, and. Uh, basically to have a story that everybody can understand and uh, we try to do that uh, by of course following certain rules uh, some are uh, of course very technical and uh, but some others are uh, a little bit more um, on the human uh, side and try to uh, convey uh, a message as clearly as possible so let's go through these uh, steps uh, right now um, so every time we want to create uh, a story, we need uh, a few elements, um, for example, the reference. And in this case, we have uh, uh, Ostend, uh, for example, uh, and we're interested in uh, the actual uh, location. Um, where is this all uh, happening? What uh, sensors, what uh, measurements? Uh, have been uh, have been uh, done uh, with what uh, equipment um, and and how and uh, and when so all this sort of information say um, let's say uh, makes the context out of our story so that's the first uh, point and it's of course very important every time you try to uh, say something to the to uh, to to the public or to the users um but we also uh, want to give uh, uh, a topic uh, interest so should that topic be on the ecology on or on the chemistry or on the uh, physical uh, processes um and in that sense so the topic is also very important and uh, based on the topic you want to convey a message in uh, in a different way for a different uh, audience um, so in order to do that uh, you also need some uh, inspiration from uh, what is already uh, existing so basically uh, apps or images or graphs that uh, the user is already um, uh, acquainted uh, with uh, you can see a, a, an example here of the uh, light uh, pollution uh, in in Europe uh, in this case, and uh, s some of you already know this map, and, uh, and we can all uh, see that uh, uh, you understand immediately what is that uh, about and how does that work. Um, but perhaps sometimes you also look for simplicity, uh, and you can see this. Uh, uh, command interface from the end of the uh, 80s that perhaps some of you uh, remember um, anyway this is just a table and it's uh, clear and people can uh, can understand what uh, what the machine is uh, is telling you what uh, the the underlying questions uh, are so basically uh it's very important to get uh, inspiration from what is already uh, available and, uh, and right now we we work with uh, lots of modern technologies so it's also important to keep up uh, uh, with the right pace with what is available uh, uh, nowadays um so every time you think about an interface like uh, we want that we like the one that we developed for um for the virtual research environment in C Data Cloud, uh, you also think about uh, uh, indeed uh, the user interface. So, so say um, uh, the way that the user interacts with uh, certain information or with the data, 
with the visualization uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, showed. So it's a bit of a model of uh, having a, a PlayStation uh, a controller with lots of buttons. Um, you don't want to give too many buttons because uh, that then uh, it becomes uh, um, it becomes uh, too much and the user can get confused. You just want to give the right amount to keep things a uh, uh, bit more simple, uh, but uh, but still keeping the concept. Uh, uh, uh correct and convey the right concept uh, to the to the audience um so um of course you have the interface and the buttons um but you also have uh, a map where you can clearly uh, reference uh, where your data is um so as you can see this uh, model is made of um, um the say visualization model we can call it like this is made of different components so user components with uh, with buttons and you have a map component and we will see later uh, we will see later we have a time component um but what is it it is of course also important as i as i said it's the actual data that you want to uh, show um and uh, so looking at the collections uh, um, and uh, specifically at uh, at what we uh, had in uh, in um, well in uh, see data cloud we uh, looked at the actual uh, data that we have and and of course it's very complex as you as you have seen uh, uh, this morning i presume um, because uh, you have uh, data sets that can be just represented by single uh, points uh, in in time, so like uh, time series, or perhaps uh, uh, trajectories, or say profiles. So where the um, Z uh, variable is also important, or you can have also a combination of all of these uh, uh, type of uh, data sets, and that makes the data more complex. And it is, uh, of course, much more complex to visualize it uh, and to and to still uh, uh, make sure that uh, the user uh, understands what uh, what what uh, uh, yeah what it's looking at. Um, so indeed, as I said, sometimes uh, you just have uh, uh, X, Y, Z location for a single point, but some other times you you have uh, um, uh, more variables uh, playing a role, uh, but also more uh, physical uh, uh, variables for a single location or a single time. And that, of course, indeed uh, makes the data set more complex. Uh, okay, um, as you have uh, perhaps uh, uh, seen uh, already during these uh, days, uh, we still uh, uh, want to make things uh, uh, compliant uh, to the standards, and that's uh, very important uh, for us and also for not only for the targets, but for all uh, C Data Cloud community, because of course, we want to keep uh, data um, uh, usable, uh, accessible, interoperable. Um, so we have been using for this uh, demo the NetCDF uh, standards, uh, as you can see here, uh, with uh, climate forecast uh, uh, metadata and ISO compliant. Um, and this is very important for us uh, also because uh, um, we are we are part of this uh, open earth uh, initiative that uh, uh, deals with uh, uh, making data uh, and tools data and tools uh, accessible uh, uh, for uh, for everybody uh, you can check yourself uh, the website openearth.eu uh, to uh, see a little bit more in depth what this initiative uh, is about. Um, so, so again, NetCDF is very is very good because uh, uh, enables uh, us uh, 
uh, and the community, scientific community, to uh, store uh, data efficiently in uh, grids um, that uh, that can be uh, sliced, can be analyzed and uh, and studied uh, quite uh, in a quite convenient and uh, easy way. Uh, so you have dimensions like uh, latitude, longitude, and uh, and time. But you also have the uh, variables like temperature and precipitation, and uh, this is uh, very convenient. We will see it later <coughs> because uh, because uh, you can just look at a, a single um, um, portion, a single uh, part of uh, of your data set without querying the all uh, the all big uh, collection and that makes uh, things uh, much uh, much faster um and it makes the um uh, the experience of the user uh, uh, better eventually um and uh, of course we what what we use is uh, a number of uh, modern technology Technologies both in the for the front end and the and the back end. Uh, you see here it's a, it's a little bit of a mix of uh, uh, tools for uh, imaging and data analysis and uh, GL uh, web GL uh, type of uh, uh, technologies and uh, front end technology websites development. Um, so <clears throat> it's uh, it's quite hard to uh, keep up with all these uh, tools, but uh, but nowadays it's uh, it is really a, a necessary step if you want to provide something that looks modern and that uh, something that everybody can uh, understand or can uh, uh, say um, reflect uh, on. Okay. Um, in this case, with the uh, online visualization, we are working with um, uh, with Docker containers, uh, and so we have several uh, containers uh, for, uh, for example, just for the uh, visualization on a map, uh, but also another container uh, for or the images for containers for uh, the data analysis and for showing uh, graphs and uh, metadata um, and uh, what is also um, perhaps uh, um, useful for the users is that uh, all our code is uh, uh, open so you can find it uh, uh, on github online through that uh, uh, url that you see uh, in the screen right now But this uh, these slides will be made available through the Ocean Teacher interface. Um, so I think I can safely uh, step to the next uh, slide. Um, so indeed, the architecture can be uh, quite uh, quite complex. But uh, we have been also, by the way, using uh, notebooks uh, for um, yeah. As, as, as you have seen in the previous uh, uh, lectures, uh, but we're using Python uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, Julia. And we have done uh, a, few, a few exercises that you can uh, uh, access through the, that URL uh, uh, link that, uh, that you have seen uh, in, the, in the previous slide. Um, but uh, we also, a few months ago, decided to uh, focus on the on the app that you, that you will see in a, in a moment, where say uh, every everything uh, comes together. Um, so again, on the component, uh, you also need to come up with the uh, with the right uh, shape of your data and uh, and color, and uh, you have to reference uh, with time. So that uh, that requires also some thinking to make things uh, appealing and and smooth for the user. Um, so here, what we have been uh, what we have been doing. This is just an example of uh, uh, the notebooks uh, that we developed. 
Um, so we could uh, uh, dynamically render uh, maps uh, uh, in the notebook. So through, uh, say, HTML uh, uh, snippet, uh, where you would have a, a map and a few uh, graphs uh, um, that would analyze the single uh, trajectory, as you see in the examples uh, uh, here. And that is done directly in the in the notebook so that makes it uh, uh, convenient for the users who are maybe used to uh, python and uh, they used to analyze their uh, data in python then <clears throat> they can also uh, learn how to uh, uh, show uh, maps and how to uh, interact with the data in a more uh, visual uh, way uh, here is another um, another example where you see a density uh, map on the left and on the right. Uh, I think that was a, a Diva uh, product that we uh, uh, plotted on a on, in, on an interactive uh, map uh, inside a uh, a notebook. So these sort of things make uh, uh, make your um, yeah, make your data more uh, visible and, um, and make you um, uh, make you more aware of what data you are working with. Let's say. Um, so this is a snapshot of the uh, map in the app, uh, where you have uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, points on a. I think here we just loaded. Uh, um, one of the uh, net cdfs uh, from um, from uh, webodv so we get uh, get a collection i think just from the mediterranean sea and a part of the uh, uh, atlantic uh, north atlantic um but not all of it but anyway that's uh, that's enough for uh, for a demo um and this is the way we uh, decided to uh, to visualize our data but we will see it directly uh, in the demo um yeah so that is just a, a map but uh, of course uh, given all the uh, technologies and packages that are available nowadays um the possibilities are also uh, endless um, so in case you have very complex data, you can think about alternative ways of uh, visualizing your, your data. For example, as in uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, 3D example uh, here in the slide. Um, so here is a uh, video, I think, of about how that, uh, uh, an example of how that works in the demo. So you see that once you click uh, a point, you have this interface with X and Y, and you can choose the variables and plot uh, a graph underneath in uh, real time with a tooltip for the actual values. And you can change uh, the variable. And that lets you discover data, um, say, directly online. Uh, you'll see that uh, directly when uh, when accessing the, the demo. Uh, and basically, what is this doing is looking at a single uh, uh, point in the map, in, uh, in this uh, map, and then <clears throat> uh, the in the, the in the server that point is um, is analyzed further and here you see um, what variables there are for that point and what are the uh, what are the values uh, and what is the metadata um of course there are as i said uh, endless uh, options because you could uh, also um, think a little bit um, a little bit more and um, perhaps even thinking about a 3d visualization of uh, of a variable 
Here is uh, an example in, uh, in Mapbox. Uh, and Mapbox actually is the uh, underlying map uh, uh, app that we uh, are using for our visualization. And it lets, uh, it lets uh, anybody uh, create uh, uh, very, very inspiring uh, uh, visualization for for a nice uh, story for the user. So <clears throat> this is uh, this is very, very well, <clears throat> a very interesting uh, options for us, and and that and that's why we decided to uh, to use the Mapbox uh, app. But I think that was the last uh, slide. Uh, so um, if there are no uh, questions, then uh, I would. Uh, I would go to the actual demo. Um, I will wait for for Claudia. Maybe if there are questions, and you can uh, translate them uh, to me. Or um... or, or 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 can I or can I go ahead with a with a demo? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll still have we we'll still uh, have uh, uh, some time before uh, half past three for questions. So, if you have any popping up, uh, uh, don't hesitate. Um, okay. So uh, here are the steps. Go to the uh, well. I think at this point we can actually uh, do it together. So. I think I can already open my browser, but this is basically the uh, uh, the um, yeah the icon. You click on the icon and you go on the visualization. And at this point, I will open uh, open it uh, with you. I think. Uh, let's go VRE, uh, the icon and then, uh, go. So here you see, uh, lots of, uh, lots of points for the, uh, Mediterranean, uh, sea and a part of the. In a part of the Atlantic, uh, you can use. Uh, so I'm confident that uh, some or many of you are um, uh, have opened the uh, the interface uh, right now, so you can uh, move with uh, uh, control. So pushing the um, the control key and uh, the left button simultaneously, and moving the mouse would uh, would uh, let you uh, tilt on the on the map uh, you can get uh, uh, you can zoom out or zoom in by uh, by uh, still using the the mouse as it was uh, uh, google maps uh, for example um, what you can also do so this is just um, the <clears throat> This is just a portion of the data set uh, between the year uh, 2016 and 2017. And you can also uh, set uh, play and you will see uh, all points uh, uh, rendered in the map and uh, changing in time. You can post this. You can also make it uh, bigger to extend uh, the time uh, window. Yeah, and uh, you can also move uh, the slider so that you see um, what data is present or has been, say, has been measured between uh, this, uh, the initial time and the ending uh, time. Um, anyway, um, so this is uh, for the map. And by the way, this data has been, uh, 
so it's an important uh, um, information because th this data has been included in the in the Docker uh, uh, image in the container, but eventually, of course, um, the the net CDF uh, of the collection will be uh, given as uh, as input. So that you can basically use the the input uh, that is uh, uh, yeah you, you can use it you, you can use the net CDF uh, collection as input for the online visualization and you can uh, visualize like like I'm doing now uh, any uh, data set uh, in net CDF uh, as a net CDF collection uh, yeah that you that you want to that you want to analyze or that you want to visualize so <clears throat> uh, right now we just um, uh, made it uh, working for a uh, for a net cdf uh, a particular net cdf that we stored in the in the container but uh, eventually you can uh, uh, upload any uh, any uh, net cdf and then the visualization picks it up and uh, and uh, uh, renders in a map and with the graphics um, renders your particular uh, net CDF that you gave as uh, as input. Uh, you can also see that uh, if you look at uh, at these points, so they change with density. So if I zoom out, they really uh, agglomerate. Uh, let's say, which gives uh, a better uh, visual uh, perception of uh, of the actual uh, data data uh, availability for that uh, time span uh, and you can uh, double click to get closer and you can uh, then uh, distinguish uh, the single uh, uh, points available so we'll try to uh, click on a certain uh, uh, point and this is the cdi code So if you click on uh, particular points, like this one changed, as you can see, 428569, uh, and it appeared here on the graphics. Uh, you can try it yourself right now. And uh, here is the a list of all the metadata for that uh, particular uh, point. Uh, and the X and Y, you have uh, the variables that are contained in the NetCDF. And this is all done uh, online. Huh? So uh, the NetCDF is red, and then these uh, values are filled. Uh, the metadata list here is, uh, is uh, filled in uh, in an automated way. And also the graphic is done uh, automatically, as you can see uh, uh, right now. So let's say, let's see um the temperature for example in the x and uh, and the depth uh, in the y's and you see uh, a graph that shows you uh depth or temperature against uh, depth uh, for a particular uh cdi and you can just hover uh, on the graph to see the actual value and in case uh, you're interested uh, in uh, another point, you can just uh, move this one, for example, uh, 431265. Uh, and as you can see, this changed also, and also the graph uh, changed, but also the list of metadata. So <clears throat> that makes it uh, um, that makes it very uh, interesting for users who want to uh, explore their uh, their data. Because they just they can just click on a point and uh, and see directly as you can see now. So now it changed again, and you can see directly what uh, the underlying data is. And of course, for <coughs> each point, I can change variables, and you can see here the graph uh, uh, changing because of uh, because of that action. Um, yeah. So this is what I wanted to uh, show you. Um, so perhaps you can take uh, five to ten minutes to uh, to play with uh, with the interface, and um, yeah, and I will be here to uh, to hear from any questions from the audience or from the remote participants.
Hi, hello, good afternoon. Um, yeah, not in the present version, I suppose, but um, not in the present uh, version. But uh, but uh, this is uh, this is good uh, good feedback. Um, how would you how would you uh, prefer that? Um, just just bigger or uh, like in a separate window or okay okay yeah we we try to i think the reason why we kept it uh, small is to uh try to keep the map uh, and the uh and the graph and uh and all the information together but um but uh I, I understand your valuable comment. Thank you for the feedback. Hi, Alex. Good to see you. Well, with uh, with Mapbox, you um, well, I think you you can actually uh, well see in, uh, in in 3D, so that you you have the option to see data uh, to see the Z parameter of the data. Um, but uh, I think uh, uh, right now, if you have uh, 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 Z or negative Z. Then uh, it will um, it will uh, be it will go inside the uh, Earth uh, or the map surface, so that wouldn't be uh, visible. But what is uh, what we applied in other projects is to um, is to uh, extrude all uh, the points at a certain height. And then from there, uh, going down as if that was the depth so that you can still see your data in uh, in 3D, but um, but to say extruded from the from the actual surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is that uh, so right now you have uh, also you have uh, you have one uh, point, and uh, so what you uh, are saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is to uh, for example this one at uh, this point that uh, it's uh, it's in the screen uh, right now. <clears throat> so you have a single point and uh, the variables, uh, but you also have all the points making the making a making the profile so <clears throat> you're saying that uh, you would uh, uh, prefer to see all these oh ah okay uh yeah um uh, no no actually wasn't uh, showing uh um so uh, so if if I click on a single point and you have uh, a depth, you know that this is uh, that all these uh, points here on the graph are stuck are stuck uh, a stack sorry uh, under this point at different uh, depths. 
but of course, for trajectories, uh, what you what you have indeed is uh, is uh, more uh, x y moving in time. So you have uh, lots of points that you uh, that you will uh, will have to visualize in the map. Um, <clears throat> it, 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 I think I think. Uh, what is uh, important is to uh, make it uh, a bit of a trade-off of uh, um, uh, say making the uh, the inter well, making the map not too not too busy uh, or not too confusing uh, but but still making data understandable um, so I, I think we can discuss that during our next uh, session in uh, in uh, well within C Data Cloud. Um, but we have been thinking about ways to visualize data, and uh, sometimes we confronted ourselves with uh, the question: or oh, well, isn't that uh, too much? Then perhaps it is. It makes things uh, too busy and too complex. Uh, but we can definitely discuss the details uh, during our next meetings. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Um, okay, yeah, thanks for your question. Um, usually, uh, the zooming in, you can do it uh, if you're working on, a, on, the, on the laptop uh, without, uh, without mouse. You can use the two fingers, like you will zoom in and zoom out on your uh, smartphone. Um, uh, whereas if you have the mouse, you can uh, just work with the uh, with the scroll uh, or with the uh, with the double uh, double click uh, to zoom in. Uh, if you're interested in a particular area, you can use uh, shift. So now, for example, I'm pressing uh, shift, and this uh, zoomed in. Uh, 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 in that uh, for, uh, uh, within that window, let's make another example. I have shift uh, pressed, and you can see that uh, the uh, window opened uh, um, for the yeah <clears throat> inside the selection uh, that uh, that was made. And uh, I, I don't have a mouse right now, so I'm uh, working with the two fingers on the on the laptop. Um, and uh, I, I can uh, I can do that without any problems. But um, uh, perhaps you can you can be more specific on uh, what uh, what is uh, what is hard to do or what uh, what is not possible. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi.
Correct. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly a, a possibility. That is certainly a possibility. Uh, but uh, we, we have to think a little bit uh, uh, on the design with uh, of, on the design of such a, a solution. Um, um, because so for, for example, uh, so you would imagine uh, um, a, a list of um, uh, parameters. Um, where that you would like to select and then show the uh, the data sets that uh, uh, contain uh, show only the points that contain uh, those uh, parameters okay yeah Mm -hmm. No, I think now that uh, that we're talking, um because we're looking at a at a uh, net CDF, um, and basically um, all the points are are there indeed. Um, and if you know a little bit how how a net CDF uh, is uh, structured, then you have uh, you have variables. And uh, these variables uh, um, are structured as a grid, where all um, um, where all uh, the the points uh, actually, where the values for all points uh, are. Um, I, I, th I think this requires a bit more thinking for me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I can uh, can give an answer right now. But I, I think it is uh, it, it is a solution. Like if you <laughs> if you select the parameter uh, uh, at first, and um, and you keep uh, only the data uh, that uh, contain that parameter that. Uh, that that might be an option. It it, it might just uh, take uh, some little longer because you would have to uh, um, to query uh, again the old data set looking for for uh, so point by point looking for the ones that have uh, that uh, variable or that parameter. Um, Whereas in this way, this this is maintained uh, and this is kept quite fast because uh, the queries on the values of the parameters are done on a single uh, point. So that makes uh, things faster. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not sure how uh, the performance uh, will uh, will react to such a change, but uh, there's something to think about for sure. 